Hey there, it's Pastor John with your midweek moment for the week uh, ending March 27th, 2021. Um, you know, something you might notice if you ever start to read the New Testament just straight through, I mean, from the very beginning of, of Matthew's gospel to the very end of the book of Revelation, one of the things you'll notice pretty quickly is that there's an awful lot of the Old Testament in the New Testament. What I mean by that is that there are a lot of places where the New Testament authors quote parts of the Old Testament. And we think one of the reasons they do that is because after the first generation of Christians really fully understood the meaning of Jesus' death and resurrection, that that understanding changed literally everything for them. And one of the things it changed was the way they understood the scriptures. Because after Jesus' death and resurrection, there were a lot of parts of their Bible that they suddenly, suddenly understood as now being all about Jesus. There were parts of the, prophet, the prophetic books that the first generation of Christians suddenly thought were about Jesus. There were parts of the historical books or of the Pentateuch that they suddenly thought were all about Jesus. And there were lots and lots of places in the Psalms that the first generation of Christians suddenly understood as being about Jesus once they fully understood the meaning of his death and resurrection. Um, in fact, one of the psalms that's appointed in the, in the lectionary for this week is just one of those psalms. It's, it's one of those psalms that the first generation of Christians understood just anew for the first time as being about Jesus. Um, the psalm that's appointed this week is Psalm 118, which is not only one of the parts of the Old Testament that is quoted in the New Testament, but it is the part of the Old Testament that is quoted the most in the New Testament. And in particular, there are two verses of this psalm that are quoted more than anything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to play a little game here. I'm going to read the part of the psalm that's appointed for this week, which includes those two verses. And you try to figure out what two verses they are. Ready? Here we go. So Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you because you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Blessed is he who enters in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. So, did you get it? Did you identify the two verses from Psalm 118 that are quoted more often than anything else in the New Testament? Well, you might not have. They're actually verses 22 and 23, which say, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, why was that? Of all, of all the stuff in the Old Testament, why was it those two verses that get quoted more often than anything else in the New Testament? And it has to do with the way that first generation of Christians, like I said, understood the Bible in the light of Jesus' death and resurrection. 
Because after Jesus died and after he rose again, when they came back to Psalm 118, they suddenly understood those two verses as being all about Jesus. After all, Jesus had been rejected, hadn't he? Jesus had been rejected by the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. Jesus had been arrested. Jesus had been mocked. Jesus had been abused. Jesus had been unfairly convicted. Jesus had even been crucified. And it's hard to be more rejected than being executed. So obviously Jesus was the one who had been rejected. But for that first generation of Christians who really understood what Jesus' death and resurrection meant, Jesus also became their chief cornerstone because it was that belief, that faith in Jesus and his death and resurrection that changed everything in their lives. Jesus became the chief cornerstone of their faith. Jesus became the chief cornerstone of their relationship with God. Jesus became the chief cornerstone of their relations with each other and and, and with everybody else in the world. That, that's why these two verses are quoted more often than anything else from the Old Testament and the New Testament, because the, the folks, the first generation of Christians, understood that those two verses summed up just how important Jesus was. For them, Jesus was the key, chief cornerstone of everything. For them, their faith was centered on Jesus. Which is kind of interesting if you think about it. Because sometimes in the contemporary church, we talk about lots of things as sort of being the most important things in our faith, but they aren't necessarily Jesus. You know, for example, a lot of people will say, well, the most important thing in Christianity is to be nice or to be good to other people. Other folks may say that the most important thing in Christianity is to be someone who is interested in justice for your fellow people. Somebody might say the most important thing in Christianity is to be tolerant and accepting of other people. And and, and there's certainly nothing wrong with any of those things. It's good to be tolerant and accepting. It's good to be interested in justice. It's good to treat other people decently. But none of those things are at the center of the Christian faith. None of those things are the chief cornerstone. Because the chief cornerstone in our faith is Jesus Christ. And with that in mind, I want to leave you with a little question. As most of you know, next week is Holy Week. It is the most sacred week of the Christian year. It's the week where we come face to face with those climactic events in Jesus' life. The triumphal entry, his last supper, his passion, his betrayal, his death, and ultimately his resurrection on Easter Sunday. And as as we make our way through Holy Week, as we, we get ready spiritually here in the church for Easter. I want you to answer or think about a question and and try to come up with an answer for it. It's a fill in the blank question. And and the question is this, Jesus means blank to me. Jesus means blank to me. Um, I encourage you to reflect on that question over the next week or so, as we, like I said, we make our way through Holy Week, and once again, we consider how Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone of our faith. Amen.